So uh, today's class will only run an hour. Um, I'll have office hours on the student Discord after this, though, at 8 p.m. CST. So if you want to come to that, you can. So um, man, maybe a few people will more join me in a sec. But let's just say um, we have a triangle. So today we'll just do some geometry. Uh, talk about the nine point circle and the Euler line. So, let's say you have the midpoints. Uh, I guess I'll draw the circumcircle, but it's not super necessary here at the start. So, let's say, uh, I guess they can be like K, L, and N. And then the heights. So let's draw in the uh, medial triangle. That's the medial triangle. It connects the midpoints. And then we draw the heights, and they intersect at the ortho center. So uh, the theorem is basically uh, let's say H is the ortho center. H ortho center. So then uh, let's say uh, I have the midpoints of AH, BH, and CH. So uh, maybe I'll give them names like X, Y, Z. So X is midpoint of AH. And so on. So then the theorem is uh, the feet of the altitudes, x, y, z, and l, m, k are all on a single circle. Yeah. It's called a nine point circle. So let's give this like this can be d, this can be e, this can be f. So yeah, can anyone see why four of them should be on a circle? Three points determine the circle, so it's not likely that all nine points, you know, nine random points will be on a circle. But in any triangle, it turns out these nine points will be on the same, same circle. So maybe I'll type out, you know, the theorem is theorem, the midpoints of the Ortho center So yeah So yeah uh so let's just take a look at four of them, right? So let's say, uh, I'll just say look at LMKD, MKD. So what kind of a quadrilateral do, does that form? Maybe I'll draw it. Yeah, so Sonic says trapezoid, yeah. So, uh, you know, it is a trapezoid and what kind of trapezoid is it? We know that you know the media, the uh, midlines are parallel to the sides, so that's fine. It's a trapezoid. Yeah. So, does anyone think it's isosceles or not isosceles? You can type one if you think it's isosceles. Okay, so I have one vote for one. 
So yeah, why? let's see why it's isosceles. So Sonic says uh, this line LK is, so let's just write it down here. LK is half AB. Then let's see why MD is also half AB, in, uh, half of AB, right? So M was the midpoint, so those are equal. So half of AB is also M. But then, you know, if we look here, uh, this is a right triangle. So that means M is the midpoint and it's also the circumcenter of ABD, right? So, so that means MD is also a circumradius of ABD. So yeah, LK equals MD. So the trapezoid uh, LMDK is isosceles. Okay, so that means, uh, does that tell us any more? So is there some point also on the, the circumcircle of those four points now, other than D? Uh, can we conclude anything more? So, you know, we know isosceles trapezoids, their opposite angles out up to 180, right? So this is alpha, 180 minus alpha, and 180 minus alpha. So that means it must be cyclic, right? Because these two add up to 180. If it was not cyclic, you would get a contradiction. So, you know, you can work out that if your circumcircle looks like this, and it passes through those three points, and if this is 180 minus that, you'll get a contradiction. See if you can work that out on your own. The same happens if, you know, if it's like that. If this is alpha and that's 180 minus alpha, we get a contradiction if that point is outside the circumcircle of the other three points. So Sonak says E and F from similar arguments. Yeah. So, you know, what we could, the way you can think about it is, hmm, let's think. D, so D is on circumcircle of like L, M, K. And L, M, and K, they define a unique circle, right? The, the, the circle through L, M, and K, three points define a circle. So if that circle contains D, then by similar arguments, you know, they should contain like, uh, E and F as well, right? Because you have an isosceles trapezoid here. So the circumcircle of L, M, and K also contains E. And you have an isosceles trapezoid uh, somewhere else, I guess here. So it also contains F. The circumcircle of L and K contains F and E. So. So E, F on L and K circumcircle as well. So I'll just use like, like the parentheses to denote um, circumcircle of a triangle or a quadrilateral. Okay. So then, um, so we're trying to prove this. So we have six points all on the circumcircle of the medial triangle. How can I show that the other six three points are also on the circle circle? So now we want to show that this, this, and this are also on the same circle. So yeah, how might we do that? Mm. 
maybe I'll draw in the circle. So but we don't wanna assume that it goes through those three points yet. So let's say I wanna prove that, let's say Z is on the circum circle. I mean, the, the circle I just drew. So this some access just show DZF. Let's see, DZ. Uh, so I'll just paste this so it's kind of like. Yeah. Oh, there's a suggestion for this. Hmm. D, D. Okay. Yeah, I, I see. Yeah, that could work because D E F. So equals D K F. Okay. Yeah, that works. So uh, let's try that, right? So let's draw in uh, D Z F. So that's D Z F. So how can we get angle D Z F in terms of the angles of the triangle A B C? So I'll just write it up here. It's kind of out of order, but oh well. So angle D, Z, F equals what in terms of ABC? D, Z, F is 90 minus D, H, C, D, H, C, yeah. Well, no, not, not quite. But 90 minus D, H, C over two. Okay, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, D H C since D Z H is isosceles. Yeah, so Z is the midpoint of the hypotenuse of H D C. So that equals that equals that. Uh, so if we drop this, then the angle we're looking at. Uh, it's gonna be like, if we call this X and X, it'll be 180 minus two X, I guess. So DZF. So, you know, we, we should be able to just get it in terms of the angles of the triangle. So I'm actually gonna erase this. So, you know, maybe one way to look at it is, so, you know, we know that this angle is related to angle B, right? How is it related? Well, there's a 90 degree angle there. So if that's B, this is 90 minus B. But then in triangle HDC, Try and go look at HDC. You know, we have that this angle equals that angle. And then should, so that should equal that angle, right? So it's 180 minus 2B. So uh, this is also 90 minus B. And then this is also 90 minus B because we just cut HZD, a nice Aussie's triangle, in half with its altitude to the base side. So I guess a DZF is 180 minus 2B. DZF is 180 minus two times angle B, where this is angle B. And then, you know, now we just need to show something else equals 180 minus uh, 2B. H. So it says HAF is 90 minus B. Yeah, so we probably won't be able to use H too much since H isn't on our circle, our nine point circle.
Yeah, it is true that DHC is B, I think, because, uh, yeah, because, oh, hang on, I think I, uh, DHC is B, yeah. So DZ. So maybe you know another one we could look at is uh, you know we can look at either this angle or oh no that doesn't go to F does it? So instead we could look at this angle. We could look at uh, DKF, find that in terms of A, B, and C, or we could look at DEF and find that in terms of A, B, and C. So let's just pick, uh, I guess you can pick the first one, right? DKF, angle DKF. Well, this is B, and then it's like uh, DFK is isosceles, so triangle DFK is isosceles because BK equals KF, because those are circumradii of BFC. So that's B. So this is 180 minus 2B. So yeah, we're done. Um, so what we've shown is that uh, BKF as an angle, BKF is, uh, well, on the one hand, it's DKF because <coughs> that's the same angle. And uh, that's 180 minus 2B. And so angle B just means angle ABC. And then uh, the same was true for DZF. So, um, that therefore the four points are cyclic. So the ZF was 180 minus 2B. So yeah, so that means these four points are cyclic. So Z, the midpoint of CH, lies on the circumcircle of KDF. So K is a midpoint, F is a midpoint, and D is a foot of the altitude of our original triangle ABC. Sorry, where is point R again? Oh, uh, yeah, I think I miswrote that. BK equals, uh, yeah, th this should be F, my bad. Thanks. Sometimes I'll, uh, try to write and talk at the same time and it usually doesn't work out so well. So yeah, you know, we're just using the fact that if you have this and these are equal, then this point K should lie on the circumcircle of ABC. If K is inside or outside, then you have problems. You can get a contradiction and I'll just leave that as an exercise for you. So K can't be like that and K cannot be like that either if those two are equal. So both of those are impossible. So K has to be on the circumcircle. So yeah, so that means that, um, you know, there, the nine points here are on the same circle and at that point is called the nine point circle of triangle ABC. So yeah, let me know if there are questions on that. So here's a question, you know, there is a center of homothety, meaning a center of dilation that takes one circle to the other. What is one possible center of dilation that takes one circle to the other? Actually, first off, the, the first question should be like, how, how big is the radius of the purple circle in terms of like metrics of ABC? So like in terms of, uh, 
like the side lengths of ABC or like its circumradius or something. Uh, how big is the circumradius of the nine point circle? Yeah, so Sonic says one half the ratio to the circumradius. Yeah, why is it one half? So I'll just say, the radius of the nine point circle is one half the radius of the whole circumcircle of ABC, which we didn't end up using. So it's because medial triangle is similar to ABC with a ratio of one to two. Yeah, so this red triangle, it's, half, it's got half the side lengths of the ABC, right? So LMK is, each side of LMK is half of each side of ABC if you match corresponding sides. So their circumcircles are also in the ratio one to two in terms of the radius. So then what about the other question? Like what's the center of homothety that takes uh, the purple circle to the blue circle? So, uh, uh, can you find a center of dilation that takes like nine point circle to certain circle of ABC? Yeah, so I have one volt for H. Homophity with factor of one half center is midway between ortho center and circum center. Uh, so H is one possible answer. Wait, let me reread this. Mathy with factor of one half center is between ortho center and circum center. Uh, that might work. So let's see. So if we draw the circum circle, the circum center is going to be right here, it's perpendicular. So that's O of the original triangle ABC. And then what we want to show, so the suggestion was we connect. O to H and you take the midpoint. Uh, I think it's not the midpoint actually. It's on that line, but it's not the midpoint. Uh, so the, that's the right idea, but uh, like, cause you know, oh, hang on. It's not quite right either. So yeah, there's two possible answers to that question. One is H, right? If we look at H, so if I make H the center of dilation, then because X is the midpoint of HA, I can double XH to become XA, right? Because Y is the midpoint of HB, I can double HY to become HB, right? And so on. So uh, no, let's just say H, H uh, equals center dilation uh, takes ABC to XYZ with ratio one half. So because X, Y, and Z were the midpoints of those line segments to this ortho center, you know, if I shrink everything by a factor of one half centered at H, then A goes to X, B goes to Y, C goes to Z. Okay, so there's another answer to this. And I see someone already got it. So it can also be the centroid G of the triangle. So I think that's on OH, but it's only one third of the way from O to H or something. So if you draw the three medians like A to K, then uh, you know, there's a negative dilation centered at the centroid. So L to B. So I'll just intersect two of them, right? So G is the centroid of ABC. And then, uh, so I'll just label this G. Um, 
Yeah. Oh, actually, for the person who said, you know, the midpoint of OH, the midpoint of OH would be like the, the center of the um, nine point circle. But it's not the center of dilation that takes one circle to the other. So, uh, yeah. So the, let's just label the, the center of the nine point circle, which is the midpoint of OH, which is N sub nine. So, yeah, that's an important point. But um, let's first talk about the homophily or the dilation. So, you know, there's one homophily centered at G that takes ABC to KLM, right? So, let's say, so homophily was fancy word for dilation. Consider the So this takes uh, you know, ABC to uh, KLM. So you know, if you have a negative ratio, so in a dilation with a negative factor, so let's say you have this square, right? I dilated about P by a factor of negative one. So that just means like A goes to W, uh, B goes to like Y and so on. C goes to uh, whatever this point is, Z, and, and, and so on. So you'll get another square. So like, so here is a dilation or homophily with ratio negative one. So these two words are equivalent. Just people use the word homophily to be fancy or something, but it's common in the lingo. So uh, maybe I'll label it X, Y, Z. Okay. So um. So that would be, you know, ratio of negative one. If I did ratio one half centered at P, it would be like that. If I did ratio two centered at P, it would be like that. So, you know, these are just all on the lines of dilation centered at P. And I can't draw the other half of the square because it's too big. So you could also have ratio one half or two. But if you have a negative ratio, it just means you dilate in the opposite direction. So you go, you know, opposite of P. So that the lines have like a direction. So P is the midpoint of AW then. That's what it means to have a negative factor of dilation or a negative, uh, you know, ratio of homophily. So if you look at triangle ABC. It was just a date, right? Um, so if you look at triangle ABC, uh, you know, here is, there's one center of homophily that takes ABC to uh, X, uh, KLM, right? ABC to KLM. Well, you know, the center of dilation, it's going to be on the lines connecting A to K. It's going to be on the line connecting B to L. And it's going to be on the line connecting C to M, right? So those lines intersect at G, the centroid, because those are the three medians of ABC. And then we know the median cuts, you know, the centroid cuts the medians in the ratio two to one. So if I dilate this point by a factor of negative one half centered at that point, I'll get K. Similarly, if I dilate centered at G, the point B by a factor of negative one half, I'll get L. Similarly, C gets sent to M by the negative one half dilation centered at G. So because ABC gets sent to KLM, there's the circumcircle of ABC gets sent to the circumcircle of KLM because you know three points define a circle. So G is another center of homophily. It's the negative center of like it's like there's like a positive ratio homophily and a net for any two circles, there usually is like a positive homophily and a negative homophily center. It's like an external and internal center of homophily, is what it's called. So H is the external, G is the internal center of homophily. Uh, usually the diagram will look, you know, just to talk about that thing, what I just said, you know, so, you know, th there could be two centers of dilation that take one circle to the other. What? One is the external center of homophily. I'll call it E. The other is the internal center of homophily. I'll call it I. 
So this is the intersection of the internal tangents. I can, uh, you know, if this is R and this is R, then I can like dilate the big circle by a factor of negative R over R, center up the internal center of mod B, which is like the intersection of the uh, internal ta common tangents. And this point will get sent to that point, this point gets sent to that point, this point sent to that point, and so on. One circle gets taken to another, but it gets inverted. You just can't tell because it's a circle either way. But this gets inverted to that. If you take the external center of mod V, you would do like a ratio of R to R, taking the big circle to the little circle. That would take this point to that point, and so on. That would not invert it, it would just shrink it. You know, inverting means like it gets shrunk to a point and then it goes to a negative direction. Yeah. So yeah, those are the two centers of homophy or the two centers of dilation between the nine point circle and the uh, circum circle. And it just looks weird a little bit because you know one circle is inside the other, but you can kind of see the same thing happening. And here we can't take the tangents of both circles, right? There is no common internal or external tangent because the nine point circle is just kind of like, well, in this case, it's inside the, the circum circle. Uh, do you guys think that's always true? Is the purple circle always in inside the blue circle? Or can they intersect? So uh, let's just try to draw some counter examples, right? Maybe if equilateral, uh, equilateral will be the same as before because you would just draw the circum circle of the midpoints. And then the two circum circles, they don't intersect. So let's try obtuse. Uh, is that possible, but not sure how to prove it? Just asking, is G the centroid? Yeah, G is the centroid. It's the intersection of the medians. So uh, K, L, and M were the midpoints of ABC. F, E, and D were the feet of the altitudes. And then Z, X, and Y were the midpoints from the vertices to the orthocenter. So those nine points lie on the circle called the nine point circle of triangle ABC. So let's see if it's true for obtuse, right? So if I draw the circum circle of this obtuse triangle ABC, and then I draw the circum circle, so we can do any, any three points on a nine point circle. So let's just pick the midpoints, right? So I pick the midpoints and I draw that circum circle then we can kind of see, oh, hey, uh, these actually intersect, right? So here the nine point center is outside or it could be outside the circum circle and the center of the circum circle is inside the, cir the circum circle, obviously. But um, yeah, so, so it could look like that. Just, you know, don't worry about the, don't get fixated on one configuration. It's good to understand things through the lens of one configuration, but be aware that there are other configurations. So here's another question. Uh, where does, uh, so, So let's just redraw our diagram because it was too cluttered. So if you look at the homotopy taking ABC to its medial triangle, uh, I'll just call it KLM again. 
So this is the midpoint, the midpoint, and the midpoint of the sides. Uh, here's A, B, and C. We draw the three cent, uh, the three medians. They intersect at the centroid, labeled G. So uh, F was the negative one half uh, ratio homophily centered at G, right? Uh, this this homophily, it's centered right here. It takes A to K, takes B to L, and it takes C to M. So, uh, so we might wonder, like, where does it take the circumcircle of the, uh, you know, maybe I'm doing this wrong. Yeah, where does it take the circumcircle of the original triangle? Oh, so let's just draw the circumcircle and draw its uh, center. So the center is like right there, intersection right there, intersection right there. So there is O. Uh, let's relabel G. We got covered up. Yeah, so where does O end up? Uh, it's not the nine point center. This, wait, oh, hang on. Maybe I asked it in the wrong order. Yeah, yeah, I guess it is the nine point center. Um, what I meant to ask was, uh, where does G, okay, yeah, it's fine. Uh, what I meant to ask, sorry, was this, uh, where does it take H? So this negative one half ratio homophily centered at G, where does it take the, the, uh, the ortho center? Right? So let's draw the three heights. Uh, that's not very good. Maybe I'll draw the height like this. So those are the three heights and that's H our ortho center. So yeah, where does the ortho center of ABC get taken to? Under the homophily that takes ABC to KLM. Uh, it's not the midpoint of OG. So, you know, let's call this DEF. So H is on uh, AD, right? So where is the image of H under this homophily F? So I'm thinking of this function as just the transformation of all the points in the plane. And you know, this is just the dilation. All the points get dilated by factor of negative one half. And the center of dilation is the centroid G. So if H is on AD, where should the image of H be, right? So if H is on altitude coming from A, then the image of H should be on the altitude coming from K, right? Which is where A gets taken. So it's somewhere on that line. Similarly, if H is on like uh, BE, which is the you know, H on altitude of B, then the image of H should be on line L perpendicular to AC, right? Because, you know, if these are parallel, which they almost look not parallel, you know, it should be on the height from L to KM, right? Let's make that 90, let's make that 90. And it should be on the height from K to LM, right? But that's just the ortho center of the medial triangle, KLM. But what is the ortho center of KLM in regards to the original triangle ABC? Hmm. 
Yeah. So if we look at it with respect to the black triangle, ABC, you know, the, the height from K to LM, that's just the perpendicular bisector of BC, right? Similarly, L to here, that's the perpendicular bisector of AC. So the, you know, that's just, so the intersection is O, so this is O. So it's the center of the circumcircle of ABC. So that means what we just proved is that, you know, H, G, and O lie on the same line in any triangle. Unless it's equilateral, in which case they're the same point. But I guess then they're still on, still on the same line. So I on the same line. And uh, G is like two thirds of the way from H to O, right? So G is one third way from O to H. And this line is called the Euler line. So, yeah. Okay, oh, yeah, so is there any questions on that dilation? So in any triangle, these three lines, you know, these three triangle centers, they lie on the same line. Okay. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot more properties uh, one thing we didn't prove, well, let's just prove it right now. So earlier I said the center of the nine point circle is the midpoint of, uh, of OH, right? So let's see why that's true, right? Why is that true? Yeah, I, I think uh, maybe someone mentioned it, but he might have left. So, so why is, the nine point center N9, the center of HO. So, you know, think back to the homotheties or dilations that took one of the circles to the other, the blue circle to the purple. One of them had ratio positive one half, right? Where was that centered again? Yeah, that was centered at H, right? So then where does that take O? So H is the external center of homotopy. Yeah, it takes O to the nine point center. So basically this point H, you know, if I shrink everything by a factor of one half, every point on the blue circle gets shrunk by a factor of one half to the big red point. And the midpoint is always on the purple circle, even though my diagram is off scale. So, in particular, the here D is like the midpoint of like, you know, H to this point and so on. And you know, that's true for any of these points. So that means the center of the circle of the blue circle, which is O, it gets sent to the center of the purple circle as well, which is N9, the center of the nine point circle. So I'm just gonna erase that because it's like too cluttered of the diagram. Yeah, so that proves the nine point center is the midpoint of OH. So the other way to see it is you can do an infinite geometric series where like, you know, you can keep taking the medial triangle and they'll converge to the nine point center. So what I mean by that is just, you know, let's say you have some triangle and then you draw the medial triangle. So, uh, you know, here's H, here's the altitude, here's the other altitude, here's like, uh, let's just draw this altitude. So this point H gets sent to this 
So like the original H, it gets sent to the H of the medial triangle, right? And then the medial triangle, if you draw its medial thing, uh, then H1, then the, the, the ortho center of the medial triangle gets sent to its medial triangle's ortho center. If you do another function centered at the centroid, that like, you know, this ratio negative one half. So here we'll always apply the negative one half ratio thing. And then, you know, these are all collinear. Oh, well, I guess that's not so. Yeah, basically, you know, this H is O1, is the center. So basically, you know, if you have H and here's O, uh, and here's G, it's one third of the way, I think. So let's do that. Mm -hmm. So the first time, uh, you know, you have a negative center of homophily that takes H to O by a factor of negative one half. And then if you keep doing that about G, I think, oh, I guess you can just do it one more time. So let's see, here's one third, here's two thirds. And then you take an, a center like negative one half homophily centered at G sending O to the nine point center. You know, this will be like one six, one half, one third. So yeah, you can kind of apply it twice and you'll get the nine point center. Uh, Maybe I'll, I'll think. I'll think about that. Maybe what I said is a bit off. But. Yeah. How do we know that G is one third from O to H again? So yeah. So that's a good question. So remember that you know in our triangle. Uh, like G is the internal, is, is the internal center of homophily, right? It's the internal center of dilation that takes ABC to its medial triangle. So, you know, here is an altitude, AD. Under the homophily that is on this line. So let's just draw two of them. Now here's G. So AD, if we scale everything by a factor of negative one half, uh, A gets sent to here. Let's do it in purple or orange. Now A gets sent to K. And uh, D gets sent to the, the foot from K, right? So let's just do that in green as well. Green, green. So the, uh, you know, because, and then let's just do another one. Yeah. So, you know, if you draw B, BL, so BL under that homophy, it gets sent to like L, oh, sorry. This should be E. It gets sent to L, uh, whatever that point is, right? The height from L to KM. So, uh, you know, the, the idea is, uh, you know, there is a homophily called F that is at G that sends A to K and B to L. So K is the midpoint of ABC mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, L is the midpoint of uh, AC. K is the midpoint of BC and L is the midpoint of AC. And then, you know, here is G. So if we do that homophily, A gets do 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 sent to K, B gets do 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 sent to L. So that homophily also takes the green line AD to the green line K, I'll just call this K zero. And it also takes the orange line BE to the orange line L, let's call that L zero, right? 
So that means it takes the ortho center, the intersection of the green and uh, orange line, uh, H, to the ortho center of the red triangle, which is, I'll just call it H2, right? So yeah, does it make sense why, you know, it's the same transformation. So H to G is double H to H2 to G, right? HG is two times H2 to G, where H2 is the ortho center of KLM because of the negative one half ratio of homophily. But then, uh, yeah, but then H2 is just the ortho, it's just the circumcenter of ABC. H2 is O of triangle ABC. So that, therefore, we get that, um, yeah. This is true. GH is double OH. Yeah, G is the negative sensor of dilation. It's, it sends ABC to KLM, where KLM is the medial triangle. So it sends all the corresponding parts of ABG to all the corresponding parts of KLM as well, including the ortho center. There's a really easy proof of OG equals one third OH using vectors. Yeah, I mean, I think this is a lot easier because you have do no calculations, right? You just look, stare at the diagram and see the similarities, right? It's similar triangles, but you know, you have a factor of negative one half. It's just similar triangles here, right? Like you can think of every pair of similar triangles as like a homophily if all the lines are parallel, right? So that's similar to that with some ratio, like, I don't know. If all the lines in the similar triangles are parallel, corresponding lines are parallel, there's a homophily that takes, a dilation that takes one to the other. So the same thing happens in any triangle, ABC with its midpoints K, L, and M. The medial triangle is just a similar triangle to ABC. And then you can you know, think of it as these dilations or homophilies. So I think this is much easier than any vector proof because vector proofs, you have to use like, you know, some calculations, which you can avoid here. Okay, so let's see. I think this is probably good enough for today. Um, I'm going to be hosting uh, another uh, office hours in like seven minutes on my student Discord. So uh, yeah, this will just be for my classes, like relevant to my classes that I run outside of this one. So if you have questions from any of the classes uh, other than this one, you can ask me um, in seven minutes on Discord. So let me just link my Discord again, just in case, but I think all of you are in it, or most of you are in it. So uh, yeah, we'll stop here for the Olympiad office hours, and then I'll do my regular class office hours in a bit, right, as soon as I end this meeting. OK, so are there any questions? So yeah, hope to see you in a few minutes on Discord. I'll just, um, it, it'll be the same thing, but it'll just be class related. So my, you can do it for intermediate geometry or any other class. Ask me any questions.